Okay, so welcome to our buyer's guide to the wonderful world of shuffleboard. Now, you may not be all that familiar with shuffleboard, so we're going to take you through everything that you need to know. We're going to take you through the background uh, of the game itself. We'll talk you through how to play it, so you're going to know all the equipment which you've got here, the rules of how to play it. We'll talk you through the different makes and models which there are to choose from. And then lastly, we'll take you through the use of shuffleboard in commercial environments, because this has become hugely popular now. Uh, and it's great fun for people to play and introduces the game of shuffleboard to a much bigger market. So stick with us, we'll take you through everything that you need to know. Okay, so let's take you through the background to shuffleboard. Well, shuffleboard itself, if you were to Google it, you'll find that there are two types. So you've got table shuffleboard, which is what we've got here, which is where you've got legs and table-like surface. But also, shuffleboard is played on cruise liners. So you'll find it's played on the deck of the ship, uh, and it's very much the same sort of thing. You're using a coit, uh, like a ring-shaped uh, object, to basically push down to the end of the play field, and it scores in a very similar fashion. So, um, so shuffleboard really, it, it, there are two types. We're really focusing on table shuffleboard, which is what we've got here. Now that game itself actually originates in 15th century England. Um, you may well have heard of sort of shove halfpenny. It's along those sort of lines. It was even played by Henry VIII. But in more recent times, it's become very, very popular in the United States. In the 50s, the game exploded. Lots and lots of bars have got them. And then that's then moved on into competition tournaments. The World Championships, for example, are held in the States uh, on an annual basis. And the game is really, really popular over there. So it's, it's real sort of hotbed basis lies in the States. But in more recent times in Europe, particularly in Scandinavia, the game has just taken off. So the last three, four years, uh, specifically Norway and Sweden, you've, if you go to pretty much any bar, you'll find that they've got a shuffleboard or two or three or four. Some, the largest place um, uh, in Sweden, for example, has got 18 shuffleboards in it. The game is that popular over there. And that popularity spread throughout Europe and particularly in the UK. So over the last year, we've sold loads of shuffleboards and those have gone into not only commercial locations, but home users, but also lots of businesses have been buying them for their breakout areas because it's such a fun game to play. It is very competitive. The rules are very simple, um, but with a lot of practice, you can really get to understand the tactics involved and it can be quite destructive in terms of how you play it. So we'll take you through the rules in a moment and you'll be able to see exactly how to play it and what good fun it is for yourself. Right, so we're going to talk you through how to play the game of shuffleboard, but before we get into all the rules and that sort of thing, let's just take you through the different components of an actual shuffleboard table so you understand what they are all called. So first of all, let's start off with the main part, which is the board. This is also known as the plank. This is made out of um, hardened maple um, in a butcher blocks kind of style. Then you've got the actual cradle that it's sat in. So this is the part that's going all around here. The end part is known as the horseshoe. And down the sides of the board, you've got what's called a gutter, which is where the actual pucks themselves will fall into uh, if you get knocked off or your aim isn't very good. Um, you've got legs underneath, which legs are legs, don't really need to see the legs, but the legs are there. Um, scoring is done. They're standard using an abacus system, which is here, which you just move along um, uh, to be able to allot your points scored. Um, but you've got the options of getting an electronic uh, scoreboard, which is what we've got here, um, and then additional lighting, which we've got here as well. Um, just sort of lights the playfield, looks quite nice. It depends what the environment is that you're putting it into, but obviously having the playfield well lit is very important. So um, optional lighting is available for pretty much all the different shuffleboards that we sell. In terms of the um, accessories or the, 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 the pieces that you need to be able to play the game, we've got, first of all, we've got the, I've referred to earlier on as pucks, but they can also be called weights. So these are very heavy metal-based units uh, with a coloured top. So these ones uh, are red and then you've got black for, for the two teams. Then you've got this, which is called shuffleboard wax. Now, this can also be called silicon wax. It can be called sand. Some people call it cheese. It looks a bit like Parmesan cheese. Um, but it's an essential part of preparing the playing surface of the board or the plank to be able to uh, run the pucks along it. So I'll show you what's involved with that in a moment. And then the last part of the kind of key accessories 
is this wiper board, which is what you use to basically clean the surface of the board off before you put down your silicon wax to be ready for a game. Okay, so before we actually play a game, let's get the playing surface of the shuffleboard ready for a game. So the key thing is to make sure it's been cleaned. So you can buy a cleaner to clean the surface of it. Then you apply a silicon spray onto there. Then the key part that I talked about earlier on is a shuffleboard wax, which I've got here, which I'll show you. As I mentioned before, it looks a little bit like Parmesan, um, but it's actually made of silicon and some manufacturers will use very small broken up walnut shells in there as well. So the more silicon in it, the faster it will play. So we sell a number of different speeds of wax. Um, this is a uh, T2 speed um, that comes in this Brunswick set here. So, so that's what it looks like. Uh, and now I'll show you how to put it onto the board. So the key when you put the wax onto the board is don't put on too much, don't put on too little. If you put on too much, you'll just end up with loads on there and it'll be like you're trying to push the weight through a snow drift, which isn't much fun. If you don't put enough on there, then the weight is prone to just get sort of stuck on its way down. It won't glide down all the way. So uh, with a bit of practice, you'll get used to it. I'm gonna show you um, putting some onto here. Hopefully I'll manage to do it uh, to the right level so that there's enough. So there we are. So you just sort of see, you're just sprinkling it on there, going left and right, and you get the scoreboard in the way. And then you just keep on going down here. And you just sort of see it just laying on the surface of the shuffleboard like that with a bit of practice you'll find that you're able to do it perfectly. And, and you know, that's a pretty good covering there. Maybe a little bit more, but pretty much spot on. Okay, so our board is ready to play on. So let's explain to you um, how we get started. So uh, it can be played with two or four players. So you've got basically four pucks per team. So um, I've got my friend Josh here, he's gonna give me a hand with the demonstration. So we're just playing with the two of us, but obviously if you wanted to play with pairs, then you each get two pucks each. Um, so first thing to do is decide who's gonna have what color. So I'll have red. You can have black. Um, the key thing though is deciding who is going to go first or most importantly, tactically, you'd want to go second. So we always use uh, paper, scissors, stone to decide. So let's go on three. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, right. So Josh is one. Uh, what do you want to do? Go first or second? You're going to let me go first. Okay, so the key thing tactically is to go second because then you're the one that's throwing the last weight or last puck because you've got control of the table. Then you can decide whether you want to knock everything else off or tactically place it somewhere or potentially get the, the best score at the very end. So you'd always want to go second, which is why Josh went second. So I'll start off then. You can take your weights. There you go. I've got my ones here. Uh, and uh, let's get going. All right, so we're at the end of our first go. Um, I've taken all of my shots. You can see where I'm laid out. Let's see how Josh gets on with his last puck then. So go on, Josh. Pressure shot, got to him. So um, let's try and score all of this. So first of all, let's just talk about the foul line. So here, we've got the foul line here. If you don't get across that line, you won't get any points. Um, likewise, like Josh did there, I, to be fair, did not one off myself as well. If you go off the side into the gutter, you don't get any points for that. Uh, and you can see the, the scoring zone. So the aim is to get your puck as far down to the end of the table as you can. That's where all the points are to be scored. Uh, so it goes three, two, one. So anything in here uh, would be uh, scored as one point. That's the one point zone. Some boards where you've got longer tables, so say 18, 22 foot ones, you'll find that they may well have four scoring zones or even some will have five. Um, but this is a 12 foot table we're playing on. This has got three scoring zones. So let's tell you how to score, um, how we're set here. So this puck here at the end uh, is just hanging off the end, known as a hanger. So if it was actually dead in the middle of the third zone, I'd get three points. But because it's hanging over the end, I actually get four. Now, Josh's next puck has ended up here, which is ahead of my one here. So that effectively means that every single puck up this end of the table just doesn't score. So in this particular game, my puck scores four, then his puck is next. That's it, I get four points, he doesn't get any, uh, and that's it, that's the end of this end. But let's just explain a couple of other bits to you. Where you've got the line here, to score any points, you've got to have the puck over the line so that when you look above it, you can actually see some wood between the line and the puck. So um, that's a critical point with the scoring. Um, and that's it, all these ones are up here. They just don't count because Josh's puck has stopped any of my other um, pucks scoring any points. So that's it. 
So my points are on the board. We clear these off now. Let's take Josh's off and get mine off. So, um, so I've got four points and now because I won uh, that end, it's my turn again now from this end to go first. Let's just get this one here. And then because we're playing two of us, uh, we'd score up to 15. So whoever gets to 15 first wins the game. If you're playing in pairs, sometimes people will actually play to 21. Uh, but we're going to play to 15, uh, and it's my go next. So let's go. So that's giving you the basic principles of, of how to play a game, how to score a game. There's loads more to it, though. So they've got, we've got another video called How to Play Shuffleboard. And in there, we'll take you through an actual gameplay. We'll take you through the tactical shots, so what you do when you're first starting with a blocker, how to knock pucks off, um, and what the more advanced tactics that make the, the game so much fun are. So we'll run you through that in a separate video, have a look at that, and you'll really get more of a feel for how you play the game. Okay, so we've run you through the background, we've talked about how to play the game, now let's talk about the actual shuffleboards themselves. We represent three of the world's best manufacturers and they're all exclusive to Home Leisure Direct. So first of all, we've got Brunswick and their models really cover home use and commercial use. We've got Hudson, uh, they are high-end home use using hotels, using commercial establishments and they do a huge range of different sizes and I'll take you through that in a moment. And then we've got Hurricane and they've got some unbelievable designs. They are really very, very high-end used commercially but also um, very high-end customers will go for hurricane models as well so um, I'll run you through each of the different models that we do and give you some recommendations to have a look at. So first of all let's talk about Brunswick. So Brunswick has got an immaculate pedigree in both pool tables which is where you've probably heard of them from before as well as in shuffle boards. They do two models, they do the Delray and the Andover, it's the Andover that we've got here and they concentrate on 12 foot and 14 foot models. So those are the only two sizes uh, which they sell. So they're also available at a very good price point. So some shuffleboard prices are actually quite high. Um, the, the Brunswick uh, offering is far more cost effective, both in the 12 foot and 14 foot sizes. Okay, so next is Hudson. So Hudson are regarded as being the number one manufacturer in the world and from all the manufacturers that we've looked at and considered, we certainly feel that they are the leaders in the market. Their range is wonderful, the quality of workmanship is absolutely fantastic and you've got a huge range of choices. So they range from 9 to 22 foot in size and they've got 16 models in their range and that really enables you to choose the look of your shuffleboard to match the environment which you're going to install it. So at one end you've got contemporary styles with say the Metro which is made out of stainless steel and got very clean sharp lines. On the other end you've got far more rustic models depending upon what the environment is. As I say you might have a, a log cabin for example you want to install that in and that will suit that type of environment perfectly. The other great thing about uh, Hudson is that they, uh, they're the only manufacturer that come with a lifetime warranty on the playing surface. So that's something that's obviously very important uh, in terms of playability and they're the only manufacturer who offer that. So let's talk you through the five key points that separate Hudson from the rest of the shuffleboards in the market. So first of all, all Hudson shuffleboards feature finger jointed boards which are far superior to butt joints which are seen on other tables. Hudson shuffle boards are the only planks on the market that are reinforced with maple inlays on the bottom, particularly at the location of the climatic adjusters. They're the only shuffle boards that have a true 90 degree edge, which is not beveled. So along with the rails, this allows the weights to hang off the rail at the end rather than just falling off. Hudson shuffle boards are the only ones that use a UV additive in the epoxy and that prevents yellowing over time, unlike other epoxies used by other manufacturers. And finally, at the risk of getting a bit technical, but I guess it is important because this is what really makes the difference in how well a Hudson shuffleboard plays, is that its polymer playing surface, the finish is actually poured with the climatic adjusters already attached to the plank. Now what this means is that the boards can be leveled both lengthways and side to side. So for a perfect pour and result in playing surface, now this is particularly important when there are two versions of the shuffleboard that we sell. We do both the American version, which is a flatter playing surface. We also do the European playing surface, which is more concave in its, in its playing surface. So when you're playing the game, it does actually play quite differently and it is great fun to play on the European version. 
Okay, so just to explain that a little bit more clearly for you, you can see here in our graphic, we've got the American version. So you can see the American version here, it's a flatter playing surface. It is still raised at the edges, so you'll find that the puck will move into the middle of the board, but not too much. Now looking at the graphic we've done here for the European version, you can see that it is a more concave playing surface. So not only will it keep the puck more on the playing, on the playing surface itself, but you can actually use that tactically to start your puck from one side of the board, use the curve on it on the outer edge to then bring the puck back towards the middle. So that enables you, if you've got a player who's using their puck to block the center of the play field, you can shoot your puck around that and still end up finishing in the middle of the board. So it adds an extra dimension, an extra level of skill to your gameplay. So let's look at the two best-selling Hudson models. So first of all, the Metro, as you can see here, it's got really clean, sharp lines. It's actually made from stainless steel, um, so you get a much sharper, more contemporary look from that. It still uses the same hard rock maple playing surface that makes the Hudson Shuffleboard so unique. But you can see that this style, as I say, is very contemporary, so depending upon where you're looking to install it, we sell a lot of these to hotels that are looking for a chic style in maybe their foyer. The best-selling Hudson model is the Grand Hudson Deluxe, and this really is an absolutely beautiful piece of workmanship. The cradle itself is made out of solid poplar and hard rock maple, finished with your choice of up to well, nine different stains that you can choose from. Uh, at the end of uh, the shuffleboard, where we showed you earlier, the horse collar, that's called, is milled from a single piece of solid wood and a three-inch thick playing surface as we said before, it's constructed from a select kiln-dried hard rock maple, and that's topped with a tournament standard clear polymer finish. Okay, so finally, let's look at hurricane shuffleboards. So these are also made in the US, uh, in Florida actually to be precise, and they are absolutely stunning. They have the wow factor in bucket loads. Um, I'll take you through a couple of the models now and you can really see what I'm talking about. Their, their design is simply like nothing else you've ever seen before. All right, so the first one for us to have a look at then is the Vertigo. This is the sleekest of all the Hurricane designs. It's got a three quarter inch etched glass playing surface. You can see from the base here, it's made out of aluminium and steel, and then that's mounted on a painted wood base. So the next one then is the Predator. You could argue that this has been inspired by the film. I'm not too sure how, but when you see it, you can maybe see what I mean. Um, but it's got glass rails, um, it's got sabre accents, and really the design is, is truly breathtaking. So, so that's the Predator. And then lastly then we've got the Force 12, and this is another stunning design. It uses a, a, a maple playing surface. Uh, the frame is made out of aluminium and steel, and again, it employs a wood base. And again, all you can just say is it is just a stunning design. So the three Hurricane models are uh, very different, but each of them uh, really do represent the very highest standard of shuffleboard that we sell. Okay, so the final thing for us to run through then is to talk about commercial use. So shuffleboard in uh, hotels, bars, cafe bars, pubs, pool halls, uh, bowling alleys. It's a real growth sector in the UK right now. It's absolutely massive. So let me just run you through some of the key points of why it's so attractive for commercial uses. Okay, so the first thing then is why is it so popular? Well, it's so popular because it's such good fun to play and that is the, the pure basis for anything that's going to be successful in a commercial environment. The game itself is very easy to learn, so you can understand the rules very quickly, as you'll have seen from this video. It's very easy to understand how to score points and how to win, but tactically it is difficult to master. And as you pick up um, the, 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 the rules and the different ways of trying to play, whether you want to be um, aggressive by knocking your opponent's pucks off the table or you want to use um, a more blocking style, you'll find that it's very, very good fun to have a game of shuffleboard. So interestingly, it's pretty much a 50-50 split between men and women playing. Um, and that's because the rules are very easy to pick up and it's very easy to be competitive straight away. There's no difficult techniques involved. There's no difficult equipment that you need to understand how to use. Everybody can pick up and play the game straight away. And it can be really good fun if you're going out in couples. You can get girls versus boys or couples playing couples. Um, and it's very, you know, it's great fun. You can see people from the bars and locations that we've um, either sold to or we've visited 
you can see that people are having great fun being very competitive, but keeping that sort of fun element to the gameplay. Thirdly, there's a very strong return on investment. So any bar owner, for example, buying a shuffleboard will find that very quickly people will realize that it's there and they'll start playing it on a regular basis. If you do tutoring um, and teach people how to play the game properly, then they'll tend to come back more and then you'll start getting people wanting to enter competitions. So if you run tournaments, those can be very, very popular. In terms of prices of play, they start from eight to 10 pounds, for example. Some places will charge as much as 15 to 20 pounds. And we found out in Sweden that the most popular places on a Friday and Saturday night will charge as much as 25 pound an hour and they'll have queues out of the door. They've got, say, 18 shuffleboards in that particular location uh, and these people still can't get on them to play. So it just goes to show how popular the game has become. And finally, the game itself is quite exclusive. Many, play, many players in the UK haven't seen shuffleboard before and they'll be quite intrigued. They'll want to find out how to play it. They want to understand the rules and they'll soon become competitive. So it is great fun to play. And as a result, you'll find that dwell time in your given location will be a lot longer with people queuing to play the game or they'll stay there and people will play for up to say two hours. Uh, and that's an awful lot of drink and potentially food consumption in your commercial location. That brings us to the end of our buyer's guide to shuffleboard. Hopefully it's piqued your interest, you can see what good fun it is to play. Um, if you want some more information, our website is full of information in terms of how to play the game. There's videos on there, but you can also look at the different specifications of all the different models that we sell. If you want some more information, you can give our sales team a call. They're all experts, they'll be able to talk you through all the different options. And if you'd like to have a game, then come down and have a go on our beautiful Brunswick and over model we've got down in the showroom here. Either the, the staff here will, will give you a game or I'll give you a game. Or if you come down with your family, we'll explain the rules to you and you can play to your heart's delight. Our people spend up to an hour playing each other on our model here in the showroom. So if you want to come and get involved, please feel free to do so. Um, we'll keep you plied with soft drinks or tea and coffee um, whilst you really learn how to play the game. So that's it from me. I hope you found this useful and look forward to taking you through another buyer's guide next time.